Hi, my name is Dr. Fab. I'm a philanthropist, a blogger, and uh, an activist. And uh, today I have an article in my hand. It was written in the Times and Miss NBC. And it says that women now run the military industrial complex. That's nothing to celebrate. And it talks about six women who are technically running the military industrial complex of the world. And uh, these women are supposed to be more compassionate, more better, you know, in the sense they should be, uh, they should have more maternal feelings. Um, considering they probably have been all moms themselves. But the reality is this, that uh, the world is getting more and more volatile as we speak and uh, more and more aggressive. The conflicts are getting worse. Lockheed Martin, which is the biggest arms producer in the world with $44.9 billion in arms sales in 2017, it manufactured the 500-pound laser-guided MK-82 bomb that struck a Yemeni school bus last August, killing 54 people, out of which 44 were children. So these six women, I'm not going to take any names. I will write the reference for you if you can look at it. A very good, interesting article telling us that the military-industrial complex is now being run by women not men and the irony is that since you would think that the women are in control um, of these weapons of the weapon producing industry you would see less conflicts you would see a relatively more peaceful environment the reality is just the opposite now why i chose to start this debate with uh, this article because we are stepping into a, into a catastrophic uh, scenario in the Middle East again. All while we were able to settle down the fumes and the volcano in uh, Syria, the whole thing is being rekindled again. And it is not Syria that is the target, it is Turkey that is the target now. So the whole fiasco started with this, that Erdogan, he is getting overwhelmed with millions and millions of Syrian refugees that have filtered into Turkey and that the rest of the Europe was supposed to absorb, but they have refused so far. So he decided that why not start a peace corridor and uh, have all these uh, Syrians uh, relocate in that area in a region that is part of Syria but that is going to be protected by the Turkish army so they will get the protection they will not be hurt by anybody and uh, they will uh, be rehabilitating and they will be able to go back home so in order to do that he spoke with quite a few people including Donald Trump of course because U.S. Army was stationed in those areas where he wanted to start this project. And uh, also, while he wanted to do this thing, he knew that one of the most uh, difficult things he's going to come across is going to come from the Kurds. Because the Kurds, during the time of Obama, uh, were given full freedom to do whatever they want in the name of countering ISIS. So they were funded, they were armed by the US to counter ISIS and to be able to uh, have a regional control uh, as the whole region got destabilized. And uh, so these Kurds, they did a lot of things other than fighting ISIS. And these things have been documented very well by Amnesty International that has already certified them as terrorists, as war criminals. And I am putting in all the details and all the documentation of the certification of Amnesty International for the Kurds that uh, they have been rendered as war criminals. They did commit war crimes when they were on their uh, missions as directed by Obama. And uh, so um, these are basically pockets of uh, various 
military factions or militant factions that are totally supported, funded, sponsored, armed by US and US allies, including Israel primarily, who want a regional domination, who want a regional presence, who want to have a regional control over the oil wells, who want to continue to be able to harvest oil from uh, wells that they don't own and that belong to the local people. So these are basically their militant factions. And so now that Erdogan decided to, um, you know, confront them and get rid of them or de-energize them, he's not planning to eradicate them or annihilate them, but he wants to de-energize them. He wants to, uh, you know, remove the empowerment. He spoke with the funding source, which is the U.S. So he spoke with Trump because Trump has a totally different perspective from what Obama had. Obama, uh, in the aftermath of the Iraq war, even though Obama got the Peace Prize uh, of Nobel, he did so much damage in the Middle East. And I know I'm a Democrat uh, myself, I've always voted for the Democrats, but having said that, Obama did a lot of damage in the Middle East. Obama invaded Libya. Obama escalated the Syrian crisis. Obama initiated the Yemen crisis and Obama also escalated the Afghanistan crisis. And this is not all. One of the most interesting things that I came to learn when I was working on RSS and uh, working on Kashmir was that there is an organization that is US based and the name is called uh, Six for Justice. That organization in 2015 tried to petition RSS as a terrorist organization in a U.S. court. And you know who stopped that organization? The, uh, the, uh, the State Department. And you know who was running the State Department? It was Hillary Clinton at that time. So um, think about it. If in 2015 RSS had been designated as a terrorist organization, so many Muslims, so many non-Hindus in India would have been able to live to this day who got lynched, who got converted to Hinduism forcefully, who got persecuted, who got oppressed, who got raped, who got tortured. This could have been stopped. This could have been, prevent this could have pre been prevented had the State Department of U.S. not stopped the Six for Justice from um, you know uh, petitioning RSS as a terrorist organization and who stopped this Obama did I just wrote him a letter a big letter officially asking him to petition RSS as a terrorist organization because it is his doing his misdoing that is responsible for the current Kashmir crisis that is going to be a nuclear flashpoint U.S. Uh, you know, kind of aggravated the whole situation. This could have been stopped. This could have been decelerated. But in, during Obama's time, instead, it was proliferated. Uh, Modi was totally empowered. Modi was energized. His hate speeches were laughed about. He was given um, a U.S. Congress audience with a standing ovation, in spite of having done all the massacre of the Gujarat. So we are looking at a very gory and bloody era of Obama. And we know, yeah, the Republicans have their own, uh, you know, bag of worms, but Obama was no better because look at what happened in Libya. Look at what happened in Syria. Look at what happened in Yemen. This is Obama's carnage. This happened under his nose. This happened under the nose of a Nobel laureate. So when it comes to the Democrats, I do not have that many hopes. They facilitated the greater Israel plan. So the Kurds were totally, 100% funded, empowered, armed by the Obama administration and by the Israeli administration in order to facilitate the greater Israel plan because the Kurds were promised 
that they will be able to carve out their own independent state, Kurdistan, by breaking up Syria, by breaking up Turkey, by breaking up Iraq. Think about it. If someone tried to do these things in U.S., like, okay, let's do this thing, you, you know, let's uh, take a few states and break them up and create a new country for the, uh, you know, African Americans or a different country, you know, a different zone for the Native Americans or a different zone for the Hispanic Americans. They, I mean, the, the world would go crazy. U.S. administration would go crazy. But think about it that U.S. Obama administration, they came up with this so-called genius plan that they are going to energize these militant factions, converting them into terrorists, documented by Amnesty International as terrorists, as war criminals, and have them spread out. They were already spread out in Iraq, in Turkey, in Syria, have them represent the military operations of the U.S. Army under the Obama administration and call them their so-called allies. Think about if someone tried to do these things within the United States of America, what would be the reaction of the general public? What would be the reaction of the administration, whoever the administration is, whether that person is a Republican, whether that person is a Democrat. So between the Democrats and the Republicans, honestly, there is not much of a difference. If anything, the only difference is that the Republicans do the damage and they tell you they're doing the damage on your face. The Democrats, they will do the damage. They may even do more damage than the Republicans, but they will not tell you. They will portray themselves as the peacekeepers, as the Nobel laureates for peace, as, as people who really care about humanity who really care about inclusiveness, but when it comes to, you know, illegal wars, invasions, you know, plundering of other countries' resources, and even something extremist like a crusade against Islam, because all these wars during Obama's times were done in Muslim countries, not in non-Muslim countries. So they do equate to a crusade against Islam because they were committed in Muslim countries. So now that the Kurds have had this protection from the U.S. Army under the Obama administration, and this has been carried on through the Pentagon during even the Trump administration, the Trump, he is different. Uh, he has done a lot of damage too. I do not agree with a lot of things he's done, especially what he did to the immigrants totally crazy the wall thing I do not endorse I'm not endorsing Trump so please do not tell me that I'm endorsing Trump I am not endorsing Trump but the one thing that he wants to do is he wants to save money he's a businessman and uh, so he decided to withdraw US forces from Afghanistan and there was a big hype within US within the Pentagon within the Democrats, within the U.S. Congress against that decision. And the whole deal going on with the Afghan Taliban was sabotaged by a parallel government, secret government of U.S., which is governed by these women CEOs, which is basically funded by these MIC contractors that I just spoke about, who are supposed to show more compassion, having maternal feelings of love and you know, being a mother, if you are a mom and you have children, you would want to think about what the mothers of Iraq, Afghanistan, Yemen, Syria, Libya would be going through right now. I don't know what kind of moms are these. One of the things that I really want to do is I want to find out where their children are and I want to show their children the pictures of the Iraqi children, Afghan children, of even Pakistani children who got droned uh, and uh, even, uh, you know, um, Syrian children and show them and tell them that, look, your mom is responsible 
for doing this to these children. Maybe they can convince their mothers to show more humanity, to show more love for peace, to stop doing this for war profits as, so that we can have peace one day because right now we are looking at the MIC guided, the secret government of US guided invasion into Turkey. Turkey is the target of the Zionists right now. They want to take down Turkey right now, period. No ifs and buts about it because it looks like Erdogan started this project this whole project he wanted to he had a good you know vibe about it he wanted to rehabilitate all the syrian refugees that nobody was willing to take and they would still be uh, called uh, called as being rehabilitated within their hometown in syria not in turkey and they will get full state protection and all the obstacles especially the kurds would be taken care of and he did not mean that he was going to kill them and he was going to act like a Mong uh, Mongol and, you know, just destroy everything, decimate everything. No, that's not what he's like. Erdogan has played such a pivotal role for peace in the Syrian crisis. You guys, I mean, you guys don't even do your homework before you start barking, literally. I'm talking to the Zionist media houses, the mainstream media houses. Just because he confronts Israeli war crimes in Gaza and against the Palestinians, he is your target. You just want him out. And then he wants to unite the Muslim world. You know, that's also a crime. I mean, look at the European Union. Look at how much pressure is on UK not to do Brexit by the European Union because they want, they really value the unity. So when it comes to the Muslim unity, and when someone is trying to do a Muslim unity, you guys just go berserk that no, we can't have the Muslims united because they are going to rise and they're going to just decimate the rest of us. No, that's not true. The Muslims are going to unite, but they are not going to unite to decimate the non-Muslims. No, period. Please do your homework. We are not uniting to decimate all of you. The European Union united. But they, the European Union united and through NATO, they destroyed the Muslims. They destroyed about 10, at least 10 Muslim nations that their armies invaded. But if the Muslims unite today through Erdogan's efforts, they are not going to invade your lands and they are not going to decimate your lands. They are not going to plunder your resources. They are not going to have your millions and millions of civilians displaced like you guys did when you invaded the Muslim lands. Because our religion tells us not to work like this. Islam is a religion of peace. It teaches peace. It teaches tolerance. It teaches the principles of coexistence. So we are different. We think differently. Not that I'm disrespecting your religion. I love Jesus. Peace be upon him. I love Moses. Peace be upon him. Totally love him. Totally love both of them. As a Muslim, I'm supposed to believe that they are prophets of Allah. We believe in the same Allah. We believe your God is the same as my God. Only our prophets are different. But I believe that your prophets are also the prophets of Allah. But I believe that my prophet, peace be upon him, is the last of prophet sent by Allah and nobody is going to be sent after him. Peace be upon him. So this is telling me that I, I, you know, Muslims hate non-Muslims, Muslims cannot ex coexist and this and that. No, even if we unite, even if all of the Muslims unite, which is uh, what Erdogan is trying to do, which is becoming a big issue for all of you to push him towards this invasion into Turkey. You know, we are not going to attack you guys, okay? So rest assured, this is not how we are. We have played defensive through and through. We have not played offensive. And even right now, Erdogan's main mission is to try to rehabilitate these millions and millions of Syrian, Muslim, uh, Syrian refugees who got filtered into Turkey, who do not have a life right now, who are technically, I mean, think about all those people whose boards got capsized in the Mediterranean Sea. Think about that great European 
uh, migration that happened. If Erdogan lets go of these refugees today, kicks them out of Turkey today, which is never going to happen by the way, but if let's say for once he does that, that European, the great European migration is going to repeat itself and these people are going to end up at your shores dying, then that is going to be a, one of the greatest humanitarian crises ever of the century. So in order to prevent that from happening, all his mission was to form this peace corridor where he can rehabilitate all these millions of Syrians in their hometown. And he's already spoken with the Syrian administration and they're on the same page as him. And he's going to Russia as I speak to talk to Russia as well in regards to the rehabilitation of these Syrian refugees. Now coming to the Kurds, the Kurds should not be used as a weapon by any of you. That has to stop. You guys have to put your greater Israel project in the closet. I've said this so many times before. You want peace in the world, you got a closet this idea that you want complete domination of the region from uh, from the river of Nile to the river of Euphrates and even beyond because I know you guys have even tried to in, uh, you know involve KPK area through your PTM movement and also Balochistan that is also part of your greater Israel project so if you want peace today right now the number one condition that I'm placing is do not play games with Muslims anymore, period. We are not going to take any games from you. Look at what the Afghan Taliban did. When they found out that while Trump was negotiating a peace deal with the Afghan Taliban, the secret government of US had stationed black water, the same black water that was working in Iraq to occupy Afghanistan as a parallel government, all while there was a big charade, facade, drama going on between Trump and the Afghan Taliban. So they got really offended. They backed off from the deal. So they're not going to take any more games from you. Uh, same thing for Erdogan. You are harboring terrorist-like militant factions amongst the Kurd population that you have been funding, that you have been arming, that you have converted into your guerrilla warriors against Turkey, against Syria, against Iraq. You want to create their Kurdistan by breaking up three countries, by impairing the sovereignty of three countries. And you want all these three countries to take this crap from you? And the United Nations, it took the United Nations less than a week to call Erdogan a war criminal, even though he was trying to do something for peace, even though what he was trying to do was to contain the terrorism, the war crimes of the Kurds that have been documented by Amnesty International. I have put in a link of that documentation right here. And what I see right now is another charade by the Zionist media houses and by the Zionist leaders. France is speaking up against it. Germany is already speaking up against it. They want to sanction, boycott Turkey. US already, Trump is so fickle. He's the least dependable person. So he agrees to this deal and then he sends this letter at the last moment, at the 11th hour, telling Erdogan to rethink this and have a deal with the Kurds and then he backs off and he says once he sees there's so much of pressure in the press and all the media is barking at him and all the US congressmen, women are speaking against him, oh you're a traitor, you betrayed our allies. What do you mean allies? These people were militant factions that were armed by the Obama administration 
to create total destabilization of three Muslim countries to create a greater Israel. If someone did these things to United States of America, you would have done you would have done things worse than waterboarding to that person. I told you, what if the Hispanics of United States stand up today and say they want to use these three southwestern, uh, you know, states and uh, like California, Arizona, and uh, you know, two three states, and they want to convert them into a Hispanic USA and another independent country, sovereign country of their own, you know. So, and then the African Americans, they, they want to, you know, use Illinois and the northern, you know, states and they want to carve their, like Georgia, and they want to carve out their own, you know, African American United States of America. And then the Native Americans, they want to have wherever their reservations are the most, they want to carve out with two, three states, their own independent native United States of America, independent sovereign state. What are you going to do? You're going to be shocked. You're not going to let them do this. But you're not going to let anybody do this to you. But you are going to continue what the Obama did, what the Obama administration did. Fund armed militant factions within the Middle East to destabilize three sovereign Muslim nations in a so-called crusade against Islam and in your pursuit of the greater Israel. I mean, seriously, you think that the Muslims are going to take all this, all this crap from you? Millions, millions of Muslim children got displaced. The, uh, the countries got decimated and the rehabilitation process has been next to negligible. The UN is out of money. The UN is such a hypocrite. It took them less than a week to call Erdogan a war criminal. And I have been, I'm trying so much that someone calls RSS a terrorist organization or a war criminal because they've been lynching Muslims alive. They've been forcefully converting Christians they are persecuting the Dalits, they are persecuting the Sikhs, they are persecuting the Bengalis. Like millions of people, millions of Indians who were born in Assam, they lost their citizenship rights. Can you believe it overnight? And the Kashmiris, look what India is doing to the Kashmiris under the orders of RSS. In 2015, this RSS was going to be named a terrorist organization by a U.S. court had it not been for the State Department of U.S. that was governed by the Obama administration. I wrote him a letter the other day. I said, this is your carnage. you got to fix it now. All those people who died because you did not label RSS as a terrorist organization, you're responsible for those people who died and the same thing for Kurds you guys armed these people you guys gave them these hopes that you're going to create a new country for them they were living happily the Kurds in Iraq were living happily as Iraqis the Kurds in Turkey were living happily as Turks the Kurds in Syria were living happily as Syrians you divided them you said no you're Kurds we are with you. We are going to create a country for you. Fight for us. Fight for us. Destabilize these areas. Impair the uh, uh, sovereignty of these three countries. Make the greater Israel for us and we will give you Kurdistan in return. And now, the whole, everybody knew that this was going to be the public reaction of the Zionists, including the Zionist media houses including the Zionist leaders, including the humanitarian organizations, that Erdogan is committing war crimes, Erdogan is going to decimate and destroy and annihilate the Kurds, totally eradicate them, and it, as if Erdogan is some kind of like a, like a monster, you know. And uh, let's create a reason, let's justify the invasion into Turkey. And let all the European Union countries unite once again, let the NATO, come into action again 
and the U.S. Army, the secret government can then, once, once the NATO invades Turkey and starts hitting Erdogan here and there, like they did in Iraq, then there can be enough pressure on Trump to send his forces again into Turkey. So they're going to repeat Iraq, and this is the excuse they came up with. Erdogan would not have taken this step without getting U.S. on board. And U.S. was on board. Now don't tell me Trump is not your president, because Trump was your president when Erdogan spoke with U.S. And the letter is a proof. So you cannot say that, you cannot disown your own presidency at the end of the day. Your president committed to this operation. Your president said, I'm going to call off all the forces from Syria. Well, he's doing it for peace. No, not for peace. I don't think he's doing it for peace. I think he's doing it, number one, to save money, and number two, to win the next election. That's what he's doing it for. But Obama did worse things during his tenure. So you know what? It doesn't matter. We need a third party. We need a third person. We need someone to think independently. Either someone brings a revolution and just turns these parties upside down, like maybe a, a, like AOC or Elhan or Bernie or you know um, uh, Rashida. I don't know. You need you need you need a revolutionary guy like Martin Luther King, you know, who can turn the Democratic Party around, revolutionize everything, just change the status quo, and come up with a new a new charter that is in accordance with the US Constitution. But till then Democrats are the same as the Republicans. They have done worse damage because they stab you on the, on your back. What Obama did to RSS, what what could have been stopped, this whole Kashmir crisis could have been stopped that happened on the 5th of August. Modi could have been de-energized. His hate against Muslims, against the non-Hindus, this whole Hindutva supremacist movement that is going on in India that is destroying every other religion. And more than the religion, they cannot destroy the religion, but the population that owns that religion, they're destroying Christianity, they're destroying Sikhism, they're destroying every other religion that does not endorse Hinduism. So this could have been stopped if in 2015 Obama had not stopped RSS from being profiled, categorized as a terrorist organization because then there would have been sanctions, then there would have been boycotts, then Modi would have been forced to, you know, publicly denounce RSS, to publicly, you know, say that he does not have anything to do with RSS. So the RSS charter could have been de-energized. That would have been the most non-volatile, peaceful way of resolving the current crisis going on in India and in Kashmir. And that could have been done in 2015, but Obama didn't do it. He didn't let anybody do it. Because like the Kurds, Obama was also empowering, energizing, RSS, another terrorist organization against those people whom he thought could defy his control, the non-Hindus, the Kashmiris, the Pakistanis. So this is, this is what they did. This was all part of the Greater Israel Plan. So right now, coming back to Erdogan, they did the same thing before the Iraq invasion. They made a big scene. There were like news high headlines everywhere. Oh, you know, uh, this is a dictator. Oh, the dictator, you know. The people are in trouble. Human rights violations, war crimes. Does all of this ring a bell? The same thing happened before Iraq. The same thing happened before Libya. And look where we are right now, a decade later where we are right now so now they want to invade turkey they're looking for an excuse 
and this excuse was created via the Kurds. Kurds are no more than an excuse for the military industrial complex, the secret government of US and their allies, including the NATO, the Zionist, European Union, to invade Turkey, to take down Erdogan. They don't like him. Nobody likes Turkey in Europe. Nobody likes Turkey because they keep on reminding themselves of all those wars that happened. Even though we don't remind our kids of what happened in those wars. The, the Knights of Templar, the Crusadic, you know, invasions and the Crusadic, um, you know, bloodshed. I don't tell my kids about those wars. But in, if you look, go to Europe, they are told to look, look down upon the Turks. They are frowned upon. You know, those, 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 neg those negative feelings are still harbored. And uh, this is why Turkey is always discriminated against, even though Turkey has played such a big role in bringing peace in the world, and especially Erdogan. And now he is taken as a threat by the Islamophobia lobbies because he's trying to unite the Muslims. And for some reason, it is in the minds of the Islamophobia cult that if the Muslims are united, they're going to come, they're going to attack us, they're going to kill us all. I mean, seriously, when, this, when is this going to stop? I was just watching this movie the other day, Midsommar, and I was watching, you know, how the paganism is kind of still there and, um, you know, how these very uh, weird uh, cult practices of, uh, you know, human sacrifice are still being practiced in various nooks and corners of the world. And uh, this was happening before all these monotheistic religions came over and then uh, Christianity, Judaism, Islam, all three religions, they all believe in one Allah. Like I said, our Allah is the same as your God. No different God. Our prophets are different, but we do believe that Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, and Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, were sent by Allah and they are very much the prophets of Allah and the books that were brought upon them including the Bible and the Torah are the books that were written by Allah but they've been amended many times and the only difference is that Quran cannot be amended it can, no, you cannot do an addendum, you cannot make an amendment in it it is a final word, people have tried a lot but they've not been able to do anything to it so that's the difference and uh, but overall what I'm trying to say is that they are the so the forces that are working against Islam this is what I'm trying to tell you guys that the forces that are working against Islam are not just working against Islam they're working against Judaism too they're working against Christianity too they're working against the concept of monotheism. They're working against the concept of one God. Do you get my point? They want to bring back those human sacrifices, those, those bloody rituals, you know. They want to bring back that time. And now there is strong, credible evidence of the presence of these forces in very, very powerful houses of the world. So these forces are not just the enemies of Islam, they're also the enemies of Judaism. They're also the enemies of Christianity. They're the enemies of God, one God. Who is your God? Who is my God? Who is the God of Christians? Who is the God of Jews? They want to eradicate the name of that God. So if you continue to do your crusades against us, Muslims, you're going to just help them gain control over you at the end of the day. If you support them against us, thinking that this is good for you, you guys are going to be lost. What makes you think they're going to be faithful? 
faithful to you if they're not faithful to us if they hate us because we believe in one god the same god that you believe in that christians believe in that jews believe in what makes you think that these forces are going to be peaceful to you faithful to you loyal to you nice to you what's i mean we believe in the same god that you do and they don't like us because we believe in him in that one god and you do believe in that one god too i know in us the, the, the christians are very very religious and i know the jews are also very very religious so what makes you think that if they don't like us they will like you and they will spare you after getting rid of us so through all those crusades that you're doing in collaboration with them what makes you think they're going to spare you once they get rid of the muslims and once they eradicate islam because your god is the same as our god and their fight is with our god their fight is with the idea of monotheism their uh, their fight is with the oneness of god they they are they are you know forging a battle against against the monotheistic religions that are owned by the same god i cannot be more clear about this but you guys need to bring your common senses in front and think clearly that crusading against islam is not the solution because this solution could create a big problem for you later if anything the muslims can help you save yourselves against these cults when the time comes in the name of humanity when they want to do human sacrifice of your children because your children believe in one god that they hate and that they're fighting against we can come and save you but if we are no more because of all your crusades and all your crazy thoughts you are going to be by yourself and you have empowered these forces so much you have made them so strong you have given them weapons of mass destruction you have given them very important positions you have sold your soul to them what makes you think they're going to spare you because you believe in the same god that the muslims do so they are as much your enemy as they are ours So Erdogan is trying to unite the Muslims not to destroy you but this is something that is written in Quran that Muslims have to stay united. We do not have the concept of nationalism in Islam. We believe that we are all like, you know, one body. So if someone gets hurt, like, you know, if you get burnt in your finger, the whole body feels the pain. So if Syria is in pain, which it is right now and Afghanistan is in pain which is it, it is right now Iraq has been in pain Libya has been in pain so down Somalia the list is endless Bosnia Kashmir Gaza Palestine our whole body hurts all the muslims 2 billion muslims hurt this is how we are groomed this is part of our faith you guys try to protect christians right The Jews try to protect Jews, right? You guys get hurt. The Holocaust hurt you guys, right? So why don't you understand that it is a simple, peaceful effort for us to try to unite all the Muslims together? We are not building this big army against you that we are going to come and invade and destroy all of you. No, we are not going to do that. So stop teaching your kids hate against us. going by the hate of those who do not even believe in a god and who are as much your enemy as they are ours so i cannot be more explicit than this but this whole thing has to stop honestly you guys have to put a full stop here like i said before 
the most important thing is to put this greater Israel project in, uh, in a closet, to shelf it. It is not viable. It is not going to work. And then uh, these women, if someone can go meet their children and show them the pictures of the children who got decimated, destroyed, displayed by their moms, you know, that will be great because hopefully th those kids can bring around their moms to start thinking like mothers because a mother would never do such a thing what these women are doing. And I wish I could give you the names, but I'm going to put the uh, article down here. And if you are listening to me, make sure that you see them, their kids, and tell them that your mom has, is committing war crimes for profits. Because this is how we can bring peace. This is how we can teach our future generation for a better planet, for a viable planet. And then coming back to Trump, you know, he's still your president, and um, he owned this project with Erdogan, and then he backed out at the last moment because uh, of pressure. And uh, so now, uh, you cannot just tell Erdogan, hey Erdogan, you can't do this. Well, he had a contract with you guys, with U.S. And uh, what he's trying to do is basically to build homes, real homes, for the refugees whom you, whom you destroyed. They are your, so he's trying to actually clean up the mess that you made. If you have even 1% shame, you would call Erdogan and you would tell Erdogan that please give us this many refugees and we will take care of them. All of you, all the European countries and US who do not want the Kurds to be hurt, who do not want to get rid of their militant factions, you know, who, who, are, who have so much sympathy for the Kurds overnight, take responsibility for what you said, for what you committed for. You committed to take all these refugees. So why aren't you? Because had you done your job of taking these refugees in, this whole operation wouldn't have even happened. Erdogan wouldn't have a reason to form this peace corridor. So now that you didn't do your job and left a big mess for Erdogan to manage, he has to do this operation. So if you have even 1% shame, try to own your responsibility and try to do what you were supposed to do. And then the second thing is that one of the things that I've always spoken about is that uh, when it comes to Kashmir, the Kashmiris, we're talking about 9 million people over here. You're worried about a couple of million of Kurds, but what about those 9 million Kashmiris? who are under a brutal siege for almost two and a half months. And for every Kashmiri, there's one Indian soldier. There are actually, more, there are 10 million soldiers. So less than one Kashmiri, for even half a Kashmiri, there are two, almost one and a half soldier. This is how bad the situation is. And they are not even allowed to commemorate a funeral, attend a funeral. They're not even allowed to even register a death certificate. They do not even have the permission to go out and bury their dead in a graveyard. They're burying their dead within their houses. The children are getting abducted. The women are getting raped and converted into sex slavery. This is what ISIS did. This is what uh, ISIS wanted there. This is what they did. And you guys went crazy about that. But when RSS owned Indian Army is doing it, the sex slavery of Kashmiri women, you are quiet. You have empowered RSS. Like, and I have a proof for it. In 2015, Justice, uh, Six for Justice wanted to file a petition in U.S. court and they were stopped by the State Department owned by Hillary Clinton and Obama administration. 
So you empowered, energized a terrorist organization to commit terror, acts of terror against the non-Hindus of India and against the Kashmiris, as a result of which thousands and thousands of innocent civilians died, got martyred. And that wouldn't have happened had you not empowered this terrorist organization. Now you tell us, Pakistan, you tell Pakistan that uh, Pakistan harbors terrorists and Pakistan harbors, uh, you know, these militant factions. You have been arming every group, every rebellion group in the Middle East. Anybody who says, I don't like my government in Syria, Iraq, Turkey, you give that person arms, you give that person money, you, give that per you make that person a hero because you want that, uh, that these areas destroyed. And over here, we have Kashmiris, we have these Kashmiri civilians, millions of them without any self-defense against Indian brutality. I mean, these brutalities have been written up by Human Rights Watch, by Amnesty International, by the United Nations Human Rights Report. Everybody has written up about the war crimes of the Indian Army, about the draconian laws that protect these Indian soldiers who commit these crimes. RSS, like I said, you guys protected RSS, like you're protecting these current militant factions, like all those, all those militant wings that you have created, erected all over Middle East in all the Muslim areas or neighboring areas connected to the Muslim areas because you want to control these areas and you think this way you can control them and you can aggravate a conflict and you can never let them rest in peace because for some reason some people who don't believe in the God that you do told you that Muslims are a big threat for you that if Muslims unite and if Muslims prosper that's the end of the day for you when the reality is this that they hate us because we believe in the same God that you believe in that the Christians believe in that the Jews believe in I mean, what the hell are you guys doing? I mean, seriously. So, when we have our armed struggle in Kashmir against the Indian brutality, I mean, think about it. Someone comes into your home carrying a rifle or a gun. I'm talking about the home. I'm not talking about the state. I'm not talking about the, you know, the state of Kashmir. I'm talking about home, home. Because these Indian soldiers, they just enter any home they want, any time, they won't even knock. So think about it. If someone enters your home like this, with a gun, with a rifle, and shoots you, and you don't have anything to protect yourself with, and that that person rapes your uh, sister, rapes your daughter, abducts your son, takes your son to a torture cell, sodomizes, and does bad things, real bad things, childhood trauma, real bad things to that kid. What will you do? If you had a gun to protect your, your children against the, these soldiers, will you be called a criminal? Will you be called a terrorist? Will you be called um, a militant? All of you in the United States, every other house has a gun. And if someone tries to trespass, enter your house without consent, and tries to do anything illegal, you will pick up your gun and shoot that person. And nobody has the right to question you in any court in the US. Same thing in Europe. But when it comes to Kashmiris, when they want to defend themselves, with arms, with weapons, against these Indian soldiers who are owned, when I say owned, they're owned by the RSS terrorist organization. You call them terrorists, you call them militants, you call them like they're not even worthy of your attention because they're terrorists, they're militants, and Pakistan is a terrorist, and Pakistan is a militant because it is sponsoring and funding and arming these terrorists. What the hell? 
So you are saying that it is okay for Kashmiris to get killed and uh, their women to get raped and uh, their children to get abducted. It's fine. They should just let the Indian soldiers keep on doing that and wait for another 72 years for the UN to finally do that plebiscite. That would never happen till RSS is energized like it is by you, empowered by you, because you will not even categorize it as a terrorist organization. You, you want them to continue to, uh, you know, um, uh, give in to the war crimes of uh, Indian Army? Why would they do that? If you, when you, when you take away their right of self-defense against aggression of Indian Army, you are technically promoting their genocide. You are no different from RSS. You are no different from BJB. You are no different from the haters. You are no different from the Indian Army. And uh, uh, you are no different. You are a war criminal yourself. So don't tell the Kashmiris that no, you cannot defend themselves. They have the right to defend themselves like you have the right to defend yourself. If someone enters your house with weapons, you're going to do everything possible to save your family from aggression. So when Kashmiris do it, let them do it and let them live with dignity for doing it. They are not terrorists. They do not kill civilians. They kill aggressors. They kill soldiers, the soldiers who rape their women, the soldiers who shower pellet guns on them, who shower bullets, real bullets on them when they're unarmed in protest. Every day they're raising funerals of Kashmiri children, adolescent children, and they're getting killed by the Indian Army all the activists, the journalists, the think tanks, the leaders of Kashmir are under detention. It has been two and a half months and the curfew is still there. And your women CEOs of the military industrial complex want to initiate another invasion into Turkey as if Iraq was not enough, Libya was not enough, Afghanistan was not enough. So again, the God that you believe in, Allah, He's our God too. And the people whom you listen to hate our God, but then our God is your God too. So if those people want us eradicated, and you're empowering them, you're next on their target list. They are no friends of yours. That's all I have to say. Bye-bye.